Blessed be God, the Father, and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for he has shown us his merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the Blessed Trinity, and it is this understanding of the nature of God which we celebrate today. The feast itself originates in the 14th century, although in the early centuries of the Church, of course, the discussion about the nature of the Trinity revealed in Scripture was greatly discussed and disputed. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, make known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. The wisdom of God cries aloud. The Lord created me when his purpose first unfolded before the oldest of his works. From everlasting I was firmly set. From the beginning, before the earth came into being, the deep was not when I was born. There were no springs to gush with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills I came to birth. Before he made the earth, the countryside, all the first grains of the world's dust. When he fixed the heavens firm, I was there. When he drew a ring on the surface of the deep, when he thickened the clouds above, when he fixed fast the springs of the deep, when he assigned the sea to its boundaries, and the waters will not invade the shore. When he laid down the foundations of the earth, I was by his side a master craftsman, delighting him all day after day, ever at play in his presence, at play everywhere in his world, delighting to be with the sons of men. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How great is your name, O Lord our God, through all the earth. How great is your name, O Lord our God, through all the earth. When I see the heavens, the work of your hands, the moon and the stars which you arranged, what is man that you should keep him in mind, 
mortal man, that you care for him. How great is your name, O Lord our God, through all the earth. Yet you have made him little less than a God. With glory and honour you crowned him, gave him power over the works of your hand, put all things under his feet. How great is your name, O Lord our God, throughout through all the earth. All of them, sheep and cattle, yes, even the savage beasts, birds of the air and fish that make their way through the waters. How great is your name, O Lord our God, through all the earth. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, by faith we are judged righteous and at peace with God. Since it is by faith and through Jesus that we have entered this state of grace in which we can boast about looking forward to God's glory. But that is not all we can boast about. We can boast about our sufferings. These sufferings bring patience, as we know, and patience brings perseverance, and perseverance brings hope, and this hope is not deceptive because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which has been given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but they would be too much for you now. But when the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth, since he will not be speaking as from himself, but will say only what he has learnt. And he will tell you of the things to come. He will glorify me, since all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I said, all he tells you will be taken from what is mine the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What can we say about that mystery of the Blessed Trinity? When we begin Mass, we always do it with the sign of the cross. We say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if we think about it too, Whenever we are baptised or we see a baptism happening, we do that. I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And indeed we see this in the words of Matthew 28. Now the truth of the Blessed Trinity is revealed in the Scriptures, in the New Testament. But certainly in the early years of the Church's existence, Many, many argued and disputed about how we should understand it. And indeed, some of those disputes led to great civil disturbances. If we think about the whole Arian crisis, which went on for well over more than a century and longer even, for it revived. It was saying that Christ himself was merely a human being, not God. But the point is, if Jesus Christ brought atonement for us, atonement from our sins, he had to do it through his divine nature. Jesus Christ had to be God in order to atone for sins to God. If he was but a human being, then it would be for nothing, and our sins to this day would not be redeemed. And for the Holy Spirit, what of him? But if the Father and the Son has not sent the Holy Spirit, then what happens? God, in that sense, it's not here with us. He's not dwelling within us. We are not sanctified 
and that sanctification, which was intended to be ours from the beginning of our creation, should not be with us. Now we can probably name many, many times when we hear the words, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the scriptures, or even in the sacred liturgy. Most of us can state what the Trinity is. It is one God in three persons. But can we really understand what that means to us? Now, if we think on these words that the gospel talks to us about, we can take some consolation in the fact that Jesus says to us today, I have many things to say to you, but they would be too much for you now. Now, if we look on back on that 2000 year history, since Jesus made that statement, we may realize that the things Jesus said were quite frankly, not immediately understood. And at that time, the disciples, the apostles, didn't necessarily know exactly what he meant. And we might also realize that it was with the help of the Holy Spirit himself that the church began to understand little by little the depth and profundity of what Jesus told us about the nature of God himself and indeed about his own nature. When he said that the Holy Spirit, when he sent the Holy Spirit from the Father, it was the Holy Spirit who inspired the apostles to write down Jesus' words and actions in the Gospels, in the Holy Scriptures, and indeed in the letters of the New Testament. And so we can hear what Jesus tells us. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth, since he will not be speaking from himself. So who is the Holy Spirit sp speaking from truth? Well, Jesus says, all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. And then he says, everything the Father has is mine. And so to recap, what the Spirit tells us belongs to Jesus. And Jesus has everything from the Father. And this shows us something of God's unity in three persons. The three persons in God are co-equal, co-eternal and co-almighty. The unity of the three persons in one God is what it means to be God. God is one, but he shows us that he exists in a relationship of three persons who are not three gods, rather one God. And we shall perhaps never fully grasp what that means, quite frankly, for the reason that we are but human beings. We are not God. And God's own nature, he himself only, can know fully and completely. May we too be given that the Father's will and receive the sanctification from the Holy Spirit so that we might conceive the Son in our hearts. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's now profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us now present our petitions for the needs of the Church and of the world. Let us pray for the whole Church and for all Christian believers that they may obey your Son's desire to join in that unity of one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those received into the church at this time, for all those baptised, and for all those who have received or are about to receive confirmation in this parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the gift of peace in all conflicts around the world, especially in the Ukraine. Through Christ's death, resurrection, and his ascension, May violence cease and peace and concord return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick at home or in hospital, for the bereaved and for those who are in any kind of need, mental, physical or emotional. May they find new strength through the paschal mystery of our Lord Jesus Christ and hope in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we pray for those who have died recently and for those whose anniversaries occurred at this time. Through our prayers, may they be freed from the bonds of sin and death and be admitted into the company of Our Lady and of all the saints in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, in a moment of silence, let us pray with faith for our own needs and intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, let us present all of our petitions to the intercession of Our Lady, Mother of the Church, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All-powerful Father, in his sacred humility, your Son, Jesus, stands before you, your throne of glory, pleading for us in the wounds of his passion. Accept our prayers in the Holy Spirit, because he is eternal priest of the new covenant, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And so now, let us place bread and wine upon our altar as we dedicate it to the Lord in our offertory. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It would become for us our spiritual drink.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. Not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with Francis, your Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and of blessed Joseph, her spouse, and of your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted amongst the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this spotless victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them. As once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Since you are children of God, God has sent into your hearts the spirit of his Son, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. Let's pause for a few moments, particularly to make our spiritual communion if we're not able to receive it at this time. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment thine. Let us pray. <coughs> <coughs> May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul. And as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and in undivided unity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.